Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So what I do here is um, I have very easy to understand Excel tutorials and today I'm going to be going over how to create and use a pivot table. Um, I'll kind of show some functionalities of it as well because I don't want this just to be about where to click, you know, um, because it's it's pretty easy for anybody to replicate what I do just by clicks. But I do want to kind of explain a little bit of detail about what we're doing and how Excel is kind of working its magic. I feel like this will make it easier for you to understand. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, just drop me a comment and, and I can respond. So if you're new, uh, definitely um, subscribe to the channel and leave me a like. Um, that way we can reach a broader audience with this video as well. So in this video, I want to show basic functionalities of a pivot table and kind of what it can do. So here I've got some sample data um, that I pulled from the internet. So this is sales data. We've got order date, region, rep. So I'm guessing that's representative. We've got the item that's sold, the units, unit cost, and then the total amount. So these are dollar amounts right here. So the first thing you wanna do when you create a pivot table is go ahead and highlight your entire data set and then go up top to insert and then do pivot table. Now you're gonna get a small little pop-up like this and it's pretty much asking you if you want it to be on a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. So personally, I like mine on new worksheets. Um, it just keeps it a little bit cleaner in my opinion. But if you want it on an existing worksheet, if you've got room over here on the right, uh, maybe underneath your data set, you can do existing worksheet and that works pretty well too. So I'll do new and I'll hit OK. And so now Excel has created um, a blank little sheet here. And this is where the pivot table is going to be. It's already it's already set up, even though you can't really see anything here. It's it's already set up. So now what you can do is just really just pick and choose um, what you want to see and how you want to see it. So my window is a little bit shrunken here, but right here we've got all those columns that I was looking at earlier and then this area here is where you can kind of pick what you want to see and how you want to see it so what I like to do is whenever there's a numerical value like a total of some sort I like to put that in the values um, this little box right here this makes it really easy to kind of play with these values you can do um, you know you can so right now it's showing us the sum so it's adding everything up but you can have some subtractions going on you can have averages or counts and it just makes it really easy right here in the value field so I'll drag total down here and then we want to see total by something else so I guess for example sake I'll grab the item and I'll throw it in the rows and immediately you can see how it created a row for every item that exists right in our main source data we've got pencils binders pens etc and so here you know we've, we've got that breakdown by item we've got binder desk pen pen set and a pencil and what it's doing here is it's summing up all the total values so this is how much how many uh, binders were sold total in terms of dollar amount and then desk um, so you can see how quick that was. It was very instant. That's the one good thing about working in Excel that I really like is that your source data exists within the same worksheet. So there is no buffering involved. There's no loading involved. Um, I know a lot of times there's like online ways to analyze data, um, web-based, you know, data warehouses. And there is a buffer involved because you're, you're retrieving data that exists elsewhere. And so it's, it's going to load for a little bit. It might, you know, might be a little bit of a wait involved. Sometimes the web browser crashes because you're looking at so much information. So pivot tables are quick in that case. And it's something that I really like. So that's a really simple way of looking at the values and then adding a field in, um, in the rows uh, box right here. I want to also show filters because you can filter this data as well. So right here in the source data we have a we have a um we have a column called region and it's pretty much just showing us what region that these i'm assuming these sales took place you know we've got east central west etc so if you wanted to see it by just a certain region only 
what you can do is grab that region and put it into filters. So right now, all these numbers that we're seeing, these are kind of mirroring the entire data set without really filtering for or against anything. What you can do here on region is say you wanna see just central sales only. So you hit central and you'll still get those rows that we picked, the items, the binder desk, but now the totals are gonna uh, dynamically change to show just the ones that took place in the central region. You can do from central to east and all these values will change immediately and then same thing for west so filtering also makes it really easy to kind of um, hone in on a very particular aspect of the data set you know uh, relatively quickly as well um, so just like we added rows you can add columns too um, i like to stick to rows if i can sometimes the data gets a little bit too complex and you'll have to throw it into the columns but i think rows for the most part does the trick and it keeps it pretty nice and neat here you know it's just what nine rows of data to analyze here it keeps it really simple um one thing you can also do is you can have more than one uh field in in these boxes so for example if we wanted to see the representative that sold each item i can drop the rep underneath the item and now what it's going to do, it's going to have that binder still, but then if you expand binder, it'll tell you exactly which representative sold how many dollar amounts worth of binders. You know, it's going to break it down by the representative. This makes it really easy. If you do want to, you know, um, look at central only, binder only, and then Andrews only, you know, it's, it's such an easy way to kind of uh, pinpoint exactly what you want to look at. Now, the reason that binder is here bolded and the reason that the names exist underneath is because here we've got item up top and then rep at the bottom. You could very well just flip this upside down to have rep at the top and item at the bottom. And now what it's going to do, it's, it's going to have all the representatives here. And if you want to know exactly how much Andrews did, you can do his drop down and you can see that, okay, he only sold binders and pencils. Whereas Morgan had binders, pencils, and a pen set. And you can compare their total amounts too to see who sold more. You know, so pivot tables really allow you to flip and analyze data in so many different ways and to get to like to get to a very precise answer um, very quickly too. So one way that this helps me out in my field is, you know, I'm a data analyst and we work with very powerful tools. But many times if I have a data set that's fairly clean, I would say this is a clean looking data set. If I have something that's easy to work with, you know, I'll just import it into Excel and then just make a pivot table out of it because it, you know, it's possible to write a, a query, a code, you know, use R, use SQL server, all of that's possible. Um, but many times you don't have to, you can just pull it into here, flip and analyze data, however you want to, you know, grab that final value, whatever you're looking at, you know, Smith 1641. And it ends up saving you a lot of time and you're able to be really, really efficient with it. And pivot tables may seem easy, um, but once you kind of really get the hang of using pivot tables, you realize just how much it's going to help you in your field, whether you're doing it for school or for work or just for personal use as well. Um, it really, really helps you and it sets you apart too, because this is a, this is a skill set, you know, so that was my um that was my little beginner um tutorial on pivot tables um so yeah that kind of wraps it up for me now um be sure to leave a subscribe um leave a comment sorry and uh, subscribe if this helped you and i'm gonna be making a series of these videos in excel um you know a lot of beginner friendly i'll try to make it really easy to understand um these tutorials and i'm hoping by the end of it we have a we have a whole playlist um, and it's going to make you data experts in the very end. So that's all for today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.